Welcome back in Latilides tutorial. In today's video I'm gonna show you how to create this editable neon text effect in Adobe Illustrator. I will show you how a character or text can be given in effects and the character can still be edited. I have made the first part in the previous video. And in this editable neon text tutorial part 2, I will show you an editable neon text effect that is different from the previous tutorial, with a little improvisation and a different neon style but still with the same technique as in the previous editable neon text effect tutorial. To create editable neon text in this illustrator tutorial, I will start by creating the background first as I usually do in previous tutorials, after that I will show you how to create an editable neon text effect. I've also provided a link, to download the project file for this tutorial in the description, there you can also download the color palette I used in this tutorial if you want. Without any further ado, let's jump into Adobe Illustrator. First of all, prepare a document with a size of 1920 by 1080 pixels. This is very important, because the pixel size in this tutorial, will greatly affect the result of the neon that we will create, which means if you use a smaller document size, then you have to use a smaller pixel size to create the neon effect. Ok let's start to create the background. First, create a square following the size of the artboard, using the rectangle tool. For the color, I'm going to give it a gradient color. Go to the gradient panel. Click the gradient annotator, or gradient slider to apply the gradient color to the created rectangle. First, change the gradient angle to 45 degrees. After that, select the white color stop which is to the left of the gradient annotator. Activate the color picker below it. Then pick purple in the color palette for the background that I have prepared here and the black color stop with red in the background palette. For the basic background color has been completed, next I'm going to give it a stripe texture. To make the lines I use the line segment tool. Before starting to create the stripes, first remove the fill color, and set the stroke color to white. Click the fill box located here on the toolbar. After that, click the none button with this red slash to remove the fill color. Double click the stroke box to change its color, that will open the color picker panel set it to white in the color field. You can click and drag to the top left corner. And click OK. Now draw a line 45 degrees, by press and hold the shift key on the keyboard, and start drawing the line. By pressing the shift key on the keyboard will help us in making straight lines with multiple angles of 45 degrees. You can make it partially off the artboard, that shouldn't be a problem because we can fix that later. Now set the stroke weight to 5 points. Then lift this line off the artboard on the left. Only then will we duplicate it until it fills the artboard. Open the effect menu. Distort and transform. Transform. Set the horizontal move to 15 pixels. And 220 copies. Remember, the size I use here is based on the size of the artboard. You can adjust the stroke weight and number of copies on the transform panel if you use a different artboard size. Click OK when finished. Reposition these stripes until they completely cover the entire artboard. Because these lines are two dominates, and almost cover the basic color of this background, so we have to blend them. Open the transparency panel. Change the blending mode from normal to overlay. And lower the opacity to 10%. I think that's enough. Now I will hide the lines that are outside the artboard, and leave only those inside the artboard. Create another rectangle with the size of the artboard using the rectangle tool. If you have trouble in making this rectangle with a size that matches the size of the artboard then you can check the size in the control panel overview here. Make sure the symbol chain is not active first, then set the size according to the artboard size, which is 1920 by 1080 pixels. After that, place it in the middle of the artboard using horizontal and vertical align center. While this new rectangle is still selected, press shift on the keyboard, and click the lines behind it. Right click. Make clipping mask, and done. Next, I'll add a shading, or vignette effect manually to this background. Create a new rectangle with the size of the artboard. After that, click the stroke box on the toolbar. And click the none button below it. Then click the fill box to activate it because we are going to color only the fill. Open the gradient panel. Click the gradient annotator or gradient slider to apply this gradient to the object. Double click the left color stop and choose white. 
and set its opacity to 0%. Double click the other color stop, and choose a solid black color. After that, change the gradient type to radial. Aspect ratio 50%. Whereas for the midpoint of these two color stops, set it to the 35% position. We're done with the gradient settings for the vignette effect. Now open the transparency panel to change the blending mode type from normal to soft light. I think this vignette effect still looks like it has a rough transition, so I'm going to make it a little smoother using the gradient tool in the toolbar. Click and drag this little black square away from the artboard, to make the transition look smoother. As well as the little box over here. And I think this is quite satisfied with the result, and it is as I expected. Now, we're done with the background, so I'm going to lock this background. Open the Layers panel. Double click on Text Layer 1 to name it with, Background. Click on the empty square near the eye toggle to lock the background layer. Click the Create New Layer button at the bottom of the panel. Double click on Text Layer 2 and name it, Neon. Now we will work on this neon layer only, and will not be disturbed by objects that are on the background layer. Next step is to create the text. Activate the text tool and start type the word you want, and for this tutorial I use text, neon. Now open the characters panel in the control panel overview. Set the font size to 400 point. And set the tracking to 75% to give distance between the characters. After that, place it in the center of the artboard using vertical and horizontal align center. And the next step is a very important step in creating this editable neon text effect, and I want you to keep an eye on this part because it's a very decisive part. And you need to remember that all the sizes I use here depend on the size of the artboard, you can't use the same size values if you use different artboard sizes. Next, open the appearance panel in the window menu. I'm going to put this appearance panel out of my collapsed panel, so it will stay open until I close it, so that it is easier for us to work with it. I have explained in detail about this appearance panel in the previous video, you can watch it to get a more detailed explanation of this appearance panel. Now double click this characters layer to edit the default appearance of this neon text. After that, on the fill layer, click the drop down menu in the fill box and select, none, in the color swatches. This way by default the character we have will be transparent without color. This is very important in creating the editable text neon effect that we are going to create, as we don't need the default fill color and make it fully transparent so we can fill it with a new stroke. Click this top layer to return to the main appearance. Now, click on add new stroke at the bottom of the panel. If you see a fill layer below the stroke layer, just ignore it because we don't need it, it appears automatically if we add a new stroke. Click and drag this fill layer above the stroke layer, so that all the strokes that we will make later, will only be below this fill layer, so that it is easier for us to manage stroke layers. But wait, I almost missed something, which is very important. Before making this neon effect, it's a good idea to input these colors into the swatches panel to make it easier for us to work with colors in this neon effect, otherwise it will save a lot of time. For these colors, you can download them at the link I prepared in the description. Here I have prepared two kinds of neon colors, pink and red. I'm going to be inputting these colors into the swatches panel with different groups so we can differentiate them easily. Select all the colors that are in the pink color group first. Open the swatches panel. Click the new color group button at the bottom of the panel. Name it, pink. Do the same with the red color group, select all three colors. And click the new color group button. Name it, red. After getting these two color groups, now we can move on to creating an editable neon text effect. Reselect the text neon and select the stroke layer in the appearance panel. Change the color of the first stroke layer to white in the color group that we have input into the swatches panel. After that, increase the stroke weight to 6 points. Next, add another new stroke below this white stroke layer. Click the character layer first to place a new stroke layer above it. Add new stroke. Increase the stroke weight to 13 points. And for the color on this new stroke layer I want to give it a gradient color, not the same as in the previous tutorial, where I just made a fill layer with a flat color, and this is what makes this neon effect different from the previous one, and we work on it with details. For that, I want you to focus more on this part. On this second stroke layer, click the drop-down menu to open the swatches panel, and choose the default black and white gradient color that is in these swatches. 
We need this default black and white gradient as the base gradient, and then replace it with the color we inputted earlier. Actually we can directly input gradient colors into this swatches panel instead of inputting these flat colors, but I prefer to input these flat colors one by one so that you can understand how to create this effect in more detail. Back to the swatches panel. After this stroke has a gradient color, now we will change its color to the color that we prepared earlier. And unfortunately we can't change it inside of this appearance panel, and basically to modify the gradient color on the appearance panel we have to use the gradient panel. First, make sure this second stroke layer is still selected. After that, open the gradient panel. First, change the gradient angle to 90 degrees. After that, double click on the white color stop. Select the orange color in the red color group that we created earlier. And for the other color stop, choose a light pink color in the pink color group. Now, go back to the appearance panel and add a new stroke layer. Select the characters layer first. Click add new stroke. Increase the stroke weight to 20 points. Since the gradient color is already set automatically on this new stroke layer, we no longer need to open the swatches panel from here. Just open the gradient panel to change the color of the color stops. For the color stop on the left, change it to red in the red color group. And for the other color stop, choose pink in the pink color group. After that, return to the appearance panel. Add another new stroke below it. Select the characters layer first. And click add new stroke. And we don't need to change anything on this new stroke layer. We're just going to add an outer glow and Gaussian blur effect to it. Just click the Add New Effect button at the bottom of the panel. Stylize. Outer Glow. Change the blending mode to Lighten. For the outer color, replace it with pink with the hex code FF0. 0. 0. A. 4. Opacity. 70%. Blur. 7 pixels. And just click OK. Add another blur effect. Add new effect. Blur. Gaussian Blur. Radius, 6 pixels. Click OK. Next, add a new stroke below it with the same settings. Select Characters. Add New Stroke. Again we don't need to make any changes to this new stroke layer. Just click Add New Effect. Blur. And Gaussian Blur. Radius 20 pixels. And click OK. Now that we're done with this neon color, it's just a matter of adding a shadow effect to get a more realistic look. On the Appearance layer. Select the characters first, and click Add New Stroke. Change the color to solid black. And a stroke weight of 12 points. Add new effect. Distort and transform. Transform. In the Transform Effects panel, lower the horizontal move to minus 35 pixels. And 35 pixels for vertical move. And just click OK. Add another Gaussian Blur. Add new effect. Blur. Gaussian Blur. Radius 10 pixels. And click OK. And we are done with this editable neon text effect. Now you can change the text with any word you want. And the thing you need to know if you want to change the size of this text so that the effects on it don't change, that is you have to activate scale strokes and effects in the properties panel. Or you can find it in the edit menu. Preferences. General. You can find it here. As soon as the effect on this text follows the size of the text, you can see it in this appearance panel. If I change the text size to small, then the stroke size on the appearance panel will also change, and vice versa if I increase the size of this neon text, the weight of these strokes will also increase. If in the previous video we created an editable neon text effect by adding several fill layers without a stroke to create the effect, when in this tutorial we only add a stroke layer without a fill to create a neon effect with a different style. So in short, at the previous video we created the neon effect using fills and this time we created the neon using strokes. You can download the project file for this tutorial in the description, there you can also download the color palette I used in this tutorial. Besides that, you can find the most appropriate course for your interests, there are Adobe Illustrator courses from beginner to advanced there or any type of courses from technical skills to creative skills. Check link in the description for more information. If you want to get more tutorials about Illustrator in the future, please click the subscribe button and activate the notification bell. Don't hesitate to give a like, and share this tutorial to the community if you think this is useful. See you in the next tutorial.